Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to answer another question, this time from Brooke Richardson 1373 who asks, can you do a video on giving good and relevant game design feedback and how do we know when things aren't balanced? This is a good question because this is effectively what I do now. As a semi-retired design consultant, what I'm effectively asked to do from companies that I work for is give them good and relevant design feedback. So I've talked a lot about making sure this is actionable, but let's do a deep dive into exactly what I mean about how to create that feedback, how to deliver it, and then I'll try to touch a bit more on the second question about balancing. So first, it's really important if you're going to give feedback to someone about their game to know exactly what it is they're making. And I know that sounds dumb, but let me, let me walk through what I mean by that, or it sounds obvious. First of all, you have to read all of their design docs. I would, at the very minimum, read what's called the GDD, the General Design Doc, which covers everything, setting, story, tone, um, the mechanics they want to use, uh, planned encounters, what kind of creatures they want to put in, items they're going to give. It's important to kind of have a good grasp of the game they say they're making. And if you've watched my video on design pillars, I think it's really important that they have these design pillars. I will look for them. If they don't have them, I will ask them if they have them. If they don't, I will ask someone to verbally give them to me. Just tell me what it is your goals are for this game. What are you trying to make? Summarize your whole game into three or four design pillars. Things that everything I look at should somehow be relevant to those pillars. I don't get a lot of pushback on this because once I explain what I'm trying to ask for, people tend to give them. I think once I got some pushback where they were like, well, we're fast and loose and, you know, we play things, you know, by gut. And I'm like, okay, then my design feedback will also be fast and loose and based more on feeling than comparison to design pillars in other games. The next thing I do that's really important is I frequently get invited to meetings and I try to go, I try to listen more than I talk at those meetings, especially at team meetings and level design meetings where they're talking about, um, at the team meetings, they tend to go over the high level events, like this is coming up or we just finished this thing. And that will give me a, uh, an idea of when I play the game, what to look for, because certain things have been listed as, well, this is complete or we have a good handle on this, great. But I also like level design meetings where they're actually putting together particular levels. I like them at all the stages. I like them early when they're just rough layouts, gray level is what it's called, with cubes and untextured objects. And that's when you talk about sight lines to points of interest. You talk about, are the spaces big enough? You're gonna have a big combat here, but it's a little narrow hallway. You look for things like space, um, are there alternatives? That's the time to go, well, you said there's a stealth path, but I don't see any way past this hallway other than fighting these things. That's when you talk about things that if you were to say that later, after the level is put together and art's gone through it and lighting's made its pass and narrative's gone in and added, you know, narrative to all the people, that is not the time to go, I think we should rearrange this level and move these creatures over here and change this space because by then so much work has gone into it that you're really wasting their time. So I try to get in early on those meetings and and give them very actionable stuff, you know, like, hey, I think this may not be big enough or this is a big empty space and nothing is going on here. Um, I also look for places to do what are called lore dumps, which I've mentioned. Sometimes games just do it from characters, but I prefer it to be like, oh, you found a computer and you can look something up on it, or you found this book or this note, or, and, I, and this is where I think Bethesda does it really well, the level itself, the layout, the uh, props and things you find in it tell a story. This is a good time 
to point out where in a, in a level that would be good to do. So the second thing I do, now that I think I know what game they're making, the second thing I do is I think about what games that are already out that are relevant to the one they're making. So I will ask them, what do you think are similar games to yours? I will play them if I haven't. Um, even if it just means, you know, grabbing the game and playing it for a few hours. If it's hard to get it, like, um, I still own a really old PC, it's like seven years old, and I don't have a PlayStation. If it's a game that's like exclusive or requires a advanced graphics card to even get a decent frame rate, I'll just go and watch one of my favorite reviewers and watch them play through the game. Another reason, by the way, I like Mortismal, he reviews games usually when he's done on 100%. So I can get a good feel for what the game is like throughout the play. There are some games that start strong and then get weak. Uh, there are some games that start um, kind of muddled, and then you can tell they found their voice, uh, they found their tone well into the game. So I like to watch good reviewers, reviewers who seem to match my temperament and uh, critique style, and I see what they thought about those games. So once I've seen all these relevant games, then I make some comparisons. I'm like, hey, you're doing this thing, they did it and it led to this problem. Uh, do you have an idea of how to solve that? Here are some ideas I have on how to solve that. Um, and by the way, that leads me right in my third point, which is always try to craft actionable feedback. Actionable feedback are things that when they hear it, they can immediately do something. So because of that, I try to avoid saying, I like this feature, I hate that feature, because that not only is that not relevant, but it's also not helpful. And that's 99% of the comments you see online from people who fashion themselves as game critique individuals. They just go, I hate this, like that, didn't like that. Not helpful. Um, instead, what I try to do is I go through their, the features that they have called out as their big features, and I match them to their design pillars. And I'll say, well, you say that um, Conversation with NPCs are important, but you have an entire level where there's not a, a single NPC you can talk to. Or you say that your game uh, is strong in its lore, but I don't see a lot of lore that I can find in this game. There's a lot of interesting things I see, ruins and interesting magic items, and I don't know anything about them, and there's absolutely nothing written. Sometimes I'll be told, oh, that'll come later, that'll come later, and I say, okay, but mark that as something that has to be done, because if you don't do it, it's going to feel lacking. Either that or change your design pillar. Stop saying you're a deep lore based game. Just those things should match. This is a place where I do go with my gut in order to create the actionable feedback. I will, while I'm playing their game, and, and this is another great thing is um, a lot of companies I'm working for have prototypes and early versions of their games already available to be played. So I will play them and I will pay attention to, is there any particular area I'm drawn to? Is there any particular thing I'm confused by? And you have to remember that early on in the game, there are things that you're going to be confused by just because they're not done yet or supporting features aren't there yet. Like things may be dropping recipes, but there's no crafting system. So you can't review that yet. But you can say, hey, I'm getting recipes. When's the crafting system going online? I'd really like to know if I'm getting recipes and ingredients fast enough and if they're easy to find and there's enough crafting stations available in the world for me to use. This is also a time where I try to look for things at features and go, this is fun. This is novel. I've never seen anything like this. Or this feature is great and isn't being used enough. These are, are things you can say, but then if you say something's fun, you should say why you found it to be fun. Oh, it matched your pillar, this pillar. I really loved crafting. It gave me really useful items and it was fun to go look for the ingredients. That's much better than going, your crafting's good. If you have new, if I like to point out any new and novel uh, features I see in the game, um, I think the that's something that not only makes the designers feel good, but one time recently in a, in a game I was reviewing for them or previewing, I saw a feature being used and I said to them, you know, not only have I not seen this anywhere, I think you could make a whole game around this one feature. 
which is both a good and bad thing to say. It's good in the sense that they could really push on that feature hard, and I think the game would be known for that feature. However, if that's not what they intended, if they're not trying to make a game about that thing, well, that's the way they're headed. <laughs> so they may want to consider modifying the feature or taking it out unless they want to make a game that's all about that. So sometimes you can find a feature that's so good, you have to tell them, I think you either need to double down on this or get rid of it because this is going to make or break your game. Or people are going to pay attention to this more than your other features because it's just so fun and useful. Finally, when you're giving feedback, it's okay to ask questions. You're at an early stage of game development. Um, they don't always expect you to provide a solution to the problem, but they at least expect you to point in the direction of one. It, when, you, when you say, I don't understand this, or I have some concerns, they would like to know. Um, and this is where questions come in. For example, let's say you're playing an early version of a game and this amazing weapon drops, it's all you use. You're like, this is so much better, it does more damage, it shoots faster, it shoots farther, it's more accurate. Yes, they can say, well, we plan to balance that later. And that's one of your questions. What are you going to do to balance this? Are you going to reduce one of those things? Are you going to nerf something? Is it going to be inaccurate? Is it going to, re you're going to reduce the range? Um, are you going to take some of those things that it's really good at and lock them behind perks so players have to specialize their character to make this the best weapon in the game? To show how you can go down the rabbit hole with that, let's say you, you go, well, maybe you should limit ammo for it um, by making ammo is something that maybe the ammo is very expensive for this weapon. So using this weapon is a one of the game's defined money sinks. Or maybe you can say ammo is only dropped by content that we want the player to get involved in. We call it aspirational content. So maybe there are creatures we want you to kill or maybe there are quests we want you to do and those things reward you with the, the kills drop that ammo that quest rewards you with that ammo. And because that's your favorite weapon, you're like, oh good, I have to go kill 50 of those guards, or I have to go finish this quest for the prince and he will give me that ammo. Great, it's a great thing to do. So you can see that you're not telling them, here's how you solve the problem with that weapon, but you're pointing out this weapon is so good the way it's designed, that's all anyone's ever gonna use. Finally, let me get to the last part of the question because wow I'm talking a lot balance balance is not my strong suit I've said that if you don't believe me go play some of my games I don't always go for balance because I usually prioritize fun over balance and I don't mind if some player builds are overbalanced I don't mind if some weapons tend to be overbalanced I what I look for is not being able to finish the game with a particular build so in the in this case for balance I do two things I lean hard on two things. First of all, I lean hard on QA. They're playing the game a lot. Like I've said in other uh, videos, I like to have a good relationship with the lead of QA, talk to him a lot, ask him a lot of questions. Um, I want to know where the game feels too easy or too hard. I want to know if there are weapons or perks that uh, people in QA are just getting all the time because they view that as the best one. Are there any that they're not? Are they they're going, oh yeah, never buy that perk, never get that trait, or that's a dump stat. I may or may not change that because it may be that, well, those are really good for one particular kind of build, but I'm at least going to listen to it and take it into account when I go do balancing. Another thing that I really love doing, and you have to have time for this, and you have to have a programmer who's willing to do this with you, is tracking data. Tracking data is where the game stores information on what the player did. Now, you're probably doing this already if you're doing an achievement system. In Outer Worlds, we were doing it for achievements and for flaws, because remember, flaws were rewarded based on, oh, your character just did something, um, maybe we want to give you a flaw based on that. What tracking data can help you in balancing is, you can look at like what weapons or armor are being used frequently, what, what weapon and armor are never being used, uh, where in the game do the players tend to die frequently? This is stuff you can look on, and it's, what I love about it is, unlike the QA stuff, it is guaranteed to be objective. QA may say they really like a weapon a lot. The tracking data will tell you, okay, everybody playing this game, QA and people who are, you know, developers who are just playing through the game to test it, 
this is the one they're using a lot. And you may ask why, and you may find out, oh, it's a good testing weapon because it's it's overall generally just very good and I'm just running through doing testing. That's fine. But if you find everyone keeps getting this one shotgun in the game, you can go, well, why is that? You can dive down, you can ask people, and you can figure out, oh, I think I need to balance this. This shotgun's a little too good. Okay. I hope that answered your question, Brooke, on how to give good feedback and some techniques on balancing the game.